Hello, my name is uh, Rakshanda Jalil. Uh, I want to talk about a book uh, that is very close to me. Uh, this is the biography of the poet Shehriyar that I wrote, Shehriyar, A Life in Poetry. Uh, Shehriyar was somebody I knew personally and uh, his poetry I admire enormously. And it seemed to me that um, we must not wait very long for a poet to have passed on before he is uh, considered a fit subject for critical study, for evaluation, and to locate his uh, his presence in the in the literary canon. Shehriyar was uh, also a very uh, fit subject for me because, uh, having studied the progressive writers' movement, I was curious to see what happens when the movement, uh, as it were, um, wanes and peters out. What takes its place? Who are the people who have drawn from the progressive writers' movement, and yet are very influenced by the other movement that is now increasingly becoming vibrant in the 50s and the 60s, which is the modernism or Jadid Parast, who are a force to reckon with. Uh, Shahriyar, uh, born in uh, 1936, and uh, he passed away in 2012. Um, spent his entire uh, working life in Aligarh, a Muslim university, a university where he came as a very young student, where he did his undergrad, then his master's, uh, then went on to do his PhD and taught in the Department of Urdu, retired as professor in the Department of Urdu and spent his entire life, even though he was very well known all over the country, and in the diaspora in particular, he was very popular in the Mishaira circuit, but Aligarh remained his diary shaw as it were. So in this book, what I really do is I examine him as a writer of the Ghazal, but also as a writer of the Nazm. I quite enjoy writing uh, literary biographies. I have in the past written a book on Dr. Rashid Jahan, who was a, a pioneering feminist Urdu fiction writer. Uh, so I, I, I like the fact that a biography gives you the opportunity to locate a writer in their context. And this is what I have attempted to do in this book, uh, published by HarperCollins two years ago. What I'll do now is hopefully uh, read um, some of his poetry that should give you uh, a glimpse, a flavor of uh, both his Ghazal and his Nazm. Let me start with a very short Nazm that I've used in the blurb of this book. Bechi hai seher ke haaton raaton ki siyahi tumne ki hai jo tabahi tumne kisi roz saza paoge now, uh, like several of his contemporaries, such as uh, uh, Munir Niazi and uh, Shah Astam Kanat and Hassan Naeem and Nasir Kazmi, uh, Shahriyar too is uh, using images that have been around, such as Raat, Badal, Neem, Khwab, Tara, uh, but he is investing them with an agency that we have not seen uh, in Urdu poetry before. And he is doing this virtually from his very first uh, collection. Uh, published in uh, 1965, Ismay Azam. And uh, this is something he continues to do over the next five decades in, in, in collection after collection. He uses seemingly general symbols and images, but he invests them, invests them with something that we can even consider political. Even though he is not an overtly and obviously political poet, like other people have been, but he is not in that sense a very um, sharply political person, but it is up to us, the reader, to read that political nuance. Let me um, uh, recite something. Ye jo asma pe tara hai, ise apni aankh se dekh hai, ise apne haath se chul lo, ise apne hoot se chum lo, ke isi pe hamla hai raat. Now, here, nothing very obviously political is being said, but I think we understand what the Tara is, we understand what the Raat is, we understand or at least pick up the allusion to the fascist forces that are gathering momentum and that which, which are about to, uh, as it were, obliterate the source of light. Let me read very quickly just a sort of a smattering of, uh, from his... Um, uh, here is again something which I quite like. Mail ba karam hai raate, aankhon se kaho ab maange, khwabon ke siwa jo chahe. 
the knights are inclined towards kindness, tell the eyes to ask for whatever they wish except dreams. So dreams, dreamlessness, the desire to have dreams, the desire to have a restful night's sleep, all these are concerns that you will find coming again and again in Shahriyar's poetry. Um, here's something that Shahriyar would recite often uh, himself, um, a share. گھر کی تعمیر تصور ہی میں ہو سکتی ہے اپنے نقشے کے مطابق یہ زمین کچھ کم ہے ناؤ لیٹ سی جو چاہتی ہے دنیا وہ مجھ سے نہیں ہوگا سمجھوتا کوئی خواب کے بدلے نہیں ہوگا Now, it is, I think, unfortunate that uh, for the lay reader, for the general reader, who is interested in Urdu poetry but may not have read a great deal, uh, they seem to uh, recognize Shahriyar from the uh, uh, ghazals and nazms and the poetry, the lyrics that he wrote for cinema, for Muzaffar Ali's films, for Yash Chopra's um, Fasli, all of which is fabulous poetry. Not for a minute am I saying that it doesn't match up to the rest of his Uber. Indeed, what he wrote for cinema, or rather what was picked up for cinema, was fabulous poetry. But I would still think that there is so much more in Shahriyar's Uber which needs to be read. And he has left behind a fairly substantial Uber, which I think, 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 ایک چیز اور پڑھ کے سناؤں گی ایک ایک غزل ہے جو شہریار صاحب خود بہت شوق سے پڑھا کرتے تھے مشاعروں میں اکثر فرمائش بھی آیا کرتی تھی اس غزل کے لیے زندگی جیسی توقع تھی نہیں کچھ کم ہے ہر گھڑی ہوتا ہے احساس کہیں کچھ کم ہے گھر کی تعمیر تصور ہی میں ہو سکتی ہے اپنے نقشے کے مطابق یہ زمین کچھ کم ہے جو شعر میں نے تھوڑی دیر پہلے پڑھا تھا بچھڑے لوگوں سے ملاقات کبھی پھر ہوگی دل میں امید تو کافی ہے یقین کچھ کم ہے اب آئیے اپنی بات کو ختم کرتے ہیں ایک نظم سے شہر آر نے غزلیں تو بہت عمدہ لکھی ہیں لیکن نظمیں بھی بہت بہت سی لکھی ہیں اور ایک چھوٹی سی نظم پڑھتی ہوں بدن کے بند میں حسار آرزو میں مطمئن تھا تم نے یاد آ کے بدن کے بند کھولے آؤ میں تم تم پر حوث اسرار کھولوں لب ترازو میں تمہیں تعبیر تولوں آخری سس کی تلک میں چپ رہوں اور کچھ نہ بولوں بس اسی ایک کام میں مشاق ہوں میں موقع ملے تو یہ کتاب ضرور پڑھیے گا شہریار لائف ان پوئٹری بہرحال کالنس تھینک یو